Hey, it's your boy Chilla here. Welcome back to Nano Seth. In the last video, I believe. Let's just see. What do we get here? Ah, yes, the uh, good old donkey fart box. So, I gave you like a list of three things, three little mini quests that we got to go on. The first one, which we've just finished here, is loading your content, your UI content from the disk instead of from a server over the network. That is obviously something that you want to be able to do, and it wasn't that hard. We got her done in like one video. The next thing is going to be a little harder, and I believe that was make it not look like ass. Now, I mean, this, it's, this does have a certain charm to it, I'm not going to lie, but uh, it's probably not going to cut the mustard for a little bit more of a girthier application, let's say. So, let me show you like my cheat sheet for some kind of C++ asshole to be able to create a UI that doesn't look like complete ass. First of all, if you want to follow along, you're going to need Node. You're going to need NPM. So if you if you find the installer for Node and you install that shit, it's going to give you NPM. And then you're going to have both of these things. You should be able to run them on your command line. The other thing is kind of optional, which is you're going to need like an editor to edit the code in. I mean, I suppose you could edit it in Visual Studio. Like it's a thing that is possible, but I don't want to. So I use VS Code. And if you get VS Code, you should get this extension, the View Official extension, because we are going to be using Vue, Vue.js. So what is that? What is that shit? Well, let me just talk about like what we're going to be using to make this UI. So first of all, below everything, sitting at the very foundation of our crap is going to be TypeScript. TypeScript is what enables me to not use JavaScript, to avoid using JavaScript. I use TypeScript. It's like totally not JavaScript. Uh, now, on top of that, we're going to be using a uh, front-end framework called Vue, Vue.js. And this is like, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of like React, maybe Angular, maybe something like Svelte, I don't know. This is just one of those things. And I'll, I'll tell you what one of those, what that actually means in a second. But we're going to be using Vue. And then there's the beautiful thing, the real, the real secret sauce. And that is a boy called Vuetify. And Vuetify is just a big toolbox of like ready designed widgets and tools and like layout things that you can use to make a UI and it is based on Vue. So in a sense, one of the reasons why we're using Vue is just so that we can use Vuetify. So this has lots of really nice looking widgets and it's not too hard to customize to a certain degree. This is the good, this is the good stuff, this is good. TypeScript is good because it lets us you do something that looks less like JavaScript. And Vue.js is, I don't know, I like it, but it's not the most common one. I think the number one golden boy is React. If you want to know what the hell this shit is, well, Vuetify is, like I said, it's just a, it's such a big toolbox of controls and UI tools. So here's the Vuetify page, and you can see they got like a big thing of documentation, and it's got lots of stuff that you can use. Like here's a, here's a radio button. Oh, that, that looks nice, I guess. That's okay. Here's a one-time password input, so you can input your one-time passwords. I don't know. Here's a combo box. Yeah. You don't like that style? Here's a different style of combo box, I guess. It looks good. It, it's a clean design. A lot of different controls with a lot of different options on customization. Uh, TypeScript, like I said, it's basically JavaScript, but it has static typing on it. What that means is that instead of you having like these weird wishy-washy types where anything goes, anything can be accepted, and you, do, you never really know for sure what you got, uh, you got a compiler that is going to allow you to specify exactly what types go into functions, what types come out, and the shape of all your data types. And it, it validates all those things and makes sure you're not doing anything incredibly stupid. And I like that. And it also enables your IDE to figure out what the hell your code is like. So when you're doing, when you're typing stuff out, it can give you suggestions that make sense instead of just, you know, like guesses it pulls out of its ass. Now, Vue.js is like the one, I guess, I don't know. You got some data. Some people might call that the model. And then you've got your user interface, you know, maybe it's got like a view of it. It could be like, there could be like a graph view of the data or and maybe there's like some controls, like some some inputs you could, you could put numbers in. Or maybe there's like a slider. What Vue does is it binds these two things together so that they are reactive in the sense that if I change the data, all my user interface stuff moves to match it, keeps it in sync and vice versa. If I change any of this, stuff in the user interface, the data will change to reflect that. 
in both directions. That's all it is. It just keeps your stuff in sync. I'm not talking about the 90s boy band. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, man. If you ever tried to do this without one of these frameworks, I remember like making some like web interface with like dynamic ability to add and remove elements from a set and editing it and then having a separate view of that data and doing it all in like jQuery. And holy shit, man. You do not want to be wasting your brain cells on that. So, you'll, uh, you'll see when, it, when I actually make something. You'll see kind of what it what I mean by this. Anyways, that's enough, John. Let's, let's freaking make the damn thing already. All right. NPM. So, you can do like a command and NPM create. And that will take a package on the internet somewhere as like a template and just like create a new project for you, which is nice. View at latest. That's the way to do it. And that is going to run a little process for us. So the project name, we'll just call this one, I don't know, ViewCeph. And that package name will be like that. Now we want TypeScript. So we'll turn that on. And we'll also turn on router. It's not really necessary, but I don't know. It might be interesting to show it. And there you go. You're done. You created it. That lives in here. Here's all the stuff. Now we want to open this in VS Code. Because VS Code is going to give us the best view of this stuff. So that command created this file structure in here. It's got a bunch of stuff. I am probably the most important file you're going to find in any project like this is the package.json. That tells you what stuff your project is using. So we're using view, view router, uh, and another important one is vite. Vite is the thing that is going to build our web stuff. Roll it all up into, you know, a few files that you would then deploy, usually to a server, but in our case, we just deploy it with our executable so the exe can load it. All right, it also defines some, like, commands you can run to, you know, build, for example, build your web page, your front end. So, I mean, let's give it a shot here. Let's, uh, you run these by doing npm run, and then you can type in the command. So let's run the build command. And it says, not recognized. We're after a rollicking start here. So the other thing is that this package.json tells you what dependencies you have, but you actually have to pull them in. It just defines, okay, we need stuff at around this version. You have to run a command to actually pull those in from the internet. And the command is npm install. You run that, and it is going to grab all the things that are requested in package.json and put them on your system. So it puts them in a folder called node modules. And this folder is, you typically, you do not check this in. It's a very big folder with a lot of files in it. You just, every time you clone a project, you would start by installing all the dependencies afresh once again. You don't check this into your source control. But now that we have all those things, it should not complain if I run build. So if I run build, it is going to run the TypeScript compiler on everything and bundle up all the stuff. And it puts, it spits out the results into this dist. So dist is your distribution. That is everything that you have to, you know, publish to make your front end available. You know, whether it be on a server or, you know, on the disk where it's going to be loaded from. So... We should just be able to copy this dist folder to where our exe is and get it to run, except our exe expects everything to be in the exact same folder as itself. So let's just do a little modification here. We're going to say, hey, instead of loading the files from, you know, the relative path, just append a little dist to that bad boy, and you should be good to go. So now if I go into, I got to find out where it's. So here's our outdoor with our exe and our other stuff. And if I go here and I open dist in the explorer, I should just be able to maybe do like a little copy, cop, copy here. Maybe we can just run this and it works. That'd be nice if it just worked the first time. But dude, we did it. We successfully created a project with Vite plus view three. Uh, what's next? This is an about page. This is the home page. Oh, it's got like a, it's got stuff here. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Well, it seems slightly more advanced than the donkey fart box, but I mean, it's still not a ton going on here, but hey, it works. That's nice. 
Now here's the thing. It's going to be very annoying if every time you make a change, you got to go and uh, run build and then copy the dist and then run our application again to see the change. That's not a very good workflow. So what we're going to do is there's another command npm run dev and that one just sets up a little local web server and uh, you can connect to that bad boy and uh, we didn't disable the ability for our thing to connect to a web server so although when we deploy it we want to load from disk during development we probably just want to use that little de dev server because it, it does some nice stuff for us I'll show you let me show you so first off we got to go to our browser and we're going to change this so we tell her to load that bad boy and that should load the exact same thing there it is oh, so we check this out oh responsive layout yay anyways um so here's the thing let me show you something neat so now we go in the source ah here it is the message you did it do a little edit save it and it automatically updates in here you don't even have to restart your damn program that's called HMR, I think. I don't know. Probably. Hot, hot man reload? Sure. Uh, so that's the thing that makes it a little nicer to, you know, do edits on your UI because you're going to be like screwing around with like little changes, like lots of tiny little fuck ass changes. And uh, it's going to be very annoying if you have to copy the files over every goddamn time. So that's nice to have that dev server. But yeah, that's our that's our setup. We are ready to get started. Um, I think I'm gonna call it for this video. In the next one, uh, there's a, there's a few files, a few folders in here. I'm gonna go over these, kind of just give you an idea of what they all mean, and uh, give you the lay of the land. It's not it's not too complicated. I'm sure it'll be fine. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more Nanosef.